So hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here again. And today I'd like uh, to answer a question that I found on Reddit uh, and I'd like to share it with you. And I think it's a very important one. It has to do about the hobby of microscopy and uh, yeah, let's just uh, have a look at the question first and then I'll give you my opinion on it. So the title, how long can microscopy keep you entertained? I haven't bought a microscope yet, but I'm hesitant to buy one because of one issue I'm sitting with. If I buy a microscope, can I be engaged in it for long enough? I feel like I could for me sitting with it at least 15 minutes a day is a win for me. Going out, getting fresh samples to look at seems really awesome. I'm just worried that after a couple of weeks that I'm never going to use it again. Anyone else had similar problems or any comforting words? Well, I think it's a great question and a question that I really like uh, to share uh, my opinion with you because this is indeed a possibility and a, a problem. You start a new activity, microscopy in this case, you're very excited at the beginning. You're just eager to spend money <laughs> on new equipment. And then, yeah, at the first couple of days, very interesting. And then sooner or later, there's the danger of, yes, boredom setting in. Yeah, everything starts to become less and less exciting. And then sooner or later, you start using the microscope less and less. And then after a couple of weeks, you've seen everything that you wanted to see. And then the microscope simply will sit in a corner. And uh, yeah, it's not the money really. That's the thing that you're concerned about. But what about the hobby, right? Uh, what about this life changing new activity that you all put your energy into at the beginning? You were so enthusiastic about it at the beginning. And then after a couple of weeks, yeah, well, hmm, you're just not using it anymore. Well, I have to tell you, this is pretty normal. Okay, with pretty much any activity. Um, but there are a couple of uh, points that I would like to share with you to minimize this possibility. And I want to start off with uh, an analogy. Um, yeah, if you see a movie the first time, it doesn't matter how, yeah, how exciting the movie is. If you've watched it over and over again, even the most exciting and the most interesting movie will become boring when you've watched it several times. I know it's an analogy, but similar to microscopes. If you keep on watching the same slides, um, over and over and over again, of course, it's going to become um, boring, yeah, because there is no personal development anymore. And in summary, in short, if you want to be engaged in the hobby for a longer time, make sure that you do the hobby deliberately and, and that you also uh, try to gain always new experiences. Because if you've already learned a lot, if you know how to use the microscope, then there is no challenge anymore. And, and then there is, of course, uh, the, the possibility that the things are going to start to become a little bit yeah, boring. So, and for this reason, I've collected a couple of points that can help you to keep engaged in the hobby. And those points are not only specific to microscopy, but pretty much to any other activity as well that you would like to do. So point number one, my suggestion is, is that after you've learned the most basic things in microscopy, start to specialize. Find a topic within the field of microscopy where you can become an expert. I want to give you a couple of examples. There are many people out there that specialize on certain organisms. For example, diatoms. Maybe um, they want to study everything relating to diatoms or proto protozoa, protists, and they want to explore what protists can be found in, in the pond that in the neighborhood. Okay. Um, so these are the things you can specialize on certain organisms that you find um, under the microscope. Another way of specialization could be maybe um, the more hardware oriented approach where you try to fix microscopes, maintain microscopes. That's also a possibility, upgrade of microscopes, especially um, antique microscopes, for example, or used microscopes. People like to assemble their own microscopes out of spare parts. That's also a possibility. It's not, yeah, it's a little bit uh, complicated sometimes maybe, but uh, it's not everyone's uh, um, approach, but there are people that do that. Or for example, you might want to specialize in photography, um, even artistic photography um, or uh, making videos. So there are many possibilities. Um, try to find an area of specialization, collecting of, um, of, of microscope slides, making microscope specimen slides, many possibilities here. In summary, try to find a, a specific topic within the field of microscopy that you can own. Let's move on to the next point. Dedicate time to your hobby. Um, yeah. Um, there is always the danger that if you do not dedicate specific time, there are other things that are easier to do. 
I want to give you an example again. It's easier to watch videos on, online uh, than to do microscopy because microscopy requires you to become active. You have to go out, you have to collect specimens, you have to make a slide, you have to put it under the microscope, observe them. Yeah, it forces you yourself to become active. It's much easier to sit back in your chair, watch television. Okay, um, and this can indeed happen, can also sometimes happens to me. And for this reason, I specifically dedicate time every day, a certain amount of time where I observe slides under the microscope. I would like to give you a rather extreme example, not from the area of microscopy, but from the area of amateur astronomy, um, I, because I had the possibility to talk uh, to an amateur astronomer several years ago. And he said that sometimes it's really difficult to do this hobby for himself because he has to stand up at two o'clock in the night to observe the night sky, because this is the time when the constellations are right uh, for him to observe the things that he wants to observe. And he said it's much easier to stay in bed and continue to sleep. But now he had to put the, the, the clock, the alarm clock, um, of, at two o'clock in the yeah at night, uh, so that he can stand up. And then he has to set up the equipment um, to do one or two hours of, of observation. Um, that that's tough <laughs> sometimes. Uh, but he dedicated this time anyway. Um, otherwise, he wouldn't be doing the hobby. Okay. Luckily, it's much easier with a microscopy <laughs> because we're not so much time dependent. Uh, okay. And we can uh, fit it in much more easily. Um, but generally, it's something that I recommend as well. The next point, set goals. Um, there are um, certain things uh, that you can uh, try to find under the microscope, which are not so easy to find. Some people like to search for tardigrades. I remember this one post that I read somewhere, Rite of Passage, it was titled, I found my first tardigrade. Or people trying to yeah, observe their own skin mites that they find on their skin. Also not so easy. I, even when I was uh, searching for mine, um, it takes quite a bit of time to actually find them then um, yeah, under the microscope. Um, so, But set goals uh, for yourself, um, uh, challenges for yourself, where you essentially specifically look for different objects under the microscope. And uh, this can be a little bit... Uh, time consuming, of course. But then once you've achieved that, then you have learned a lot and you have actually um, yeah, achieved a certain goal that you've set yourself. So you're doing basically a competition with yourself because in competitive sports, um, yeah, you're competing against other people. Uh, but with microscopy, which is not competitive, you compete against yourself and you try to improve yourself. I would like to now address the next point. Try to combine microscopy with other activities that you have. Now, this is not always quite easy, but there are sometimes a few possibilities. For example, if you go hiking, always take along um, um, yeah, some containers to collect specimens, for example. Um, I remember one of my uh, co-workers, um, he always, uh, yeah, when he was went hiking, he always observed plants because he was a botanist, yeah, for, um, also out of interest. Um, so he always uh, kept on combining his interest with other activities. In the case of microscopy, I know there are not so many possibilities here, but if you collect stamps or coins, of course, you would like to observe them also under the microscope or minerals, for example. Um, but it's possible, um, of course, to um, also combine with uh, regular everyday activities where when you go out, uh, when you into nature, um, take along uh, some sample containers to bring along some microscopy samples for you to observe under the microscope. Next suggestion is, is make microscopy easy for you to do on an everyday basis. In other words, set up your workspace. If you have your microscope packaged away somewhere, unpacking it, setting it up, getting and so on until everything's properly prepared takes time. Um, and then you're probably less likely to do that. But if you've got the microscope standing on the table, um, then it's much easier for, for you to simply switch on the microscope and ob start observing. For example, in my case, when I'm making these YouTube videos here, is I set up a special room here um, where everything is arranged with a camera in front of me. Uh, all the lighting is arranged, so it's very easy for me to actually start making YouTube videos. And I recommend something similar also with microscopy. Not only dedicate some time to the hobby, but also dedicate a certain specific space um, in your home, um, on your desk. It doesn't take a lot of space anyway, but it's basically dedicate a, a place which is reserved for microscopy, where you can retreat and withdraw a little bit to do some observation. So the next one, yes. We're living now in the year 2022, and yes, there is there are large online communities available. Nowadays, this is possible. There is no need anymore to meet up in person um, to join a club. 
If there is the possibility in the area where you live, the better, then please do that. But you do not depend on a physical uh, meeting with other people. You can now um, con connect and network with other people online. There are many web forums out there. Um, there are many people that um, have uh, Instagram accounts, YouTube channels, and so on. And join in um, and participate in this uh, community. Um, Reddit, for example, which I already mentioned before. People exchange ideas. People uh, share um, observation ideas. Um, yeah, they are able to discuss different problems with each other. And this also motivates because it shows that you're not only um, you're alone and you also see what other people are doing. And this also kind of... Uh, yeah, carries you a little bit and makes you part of a wider community. And the last point that I would like uh, to do is, 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 um, document, document your observations. Now I used to keep, um, a, a journal, um, where I wrote down, um, all of my observations. Um, I'm not doing that anymore, but what I rather I'm doing right now is I'm taking pictures and I'm, uh, archiving them on my hard disk. Um, and then, um, I'm collecting my observations in that way. And of course I make YouTube videos, um, which essentially also is a form of documenting my observations. But when you do that, um, you essentially are collecting something, you're collecting pictures, you're collecting your own notes. And I recommend that you do that because it actually sees that you're also progressing and it gives the hobby um, a certain amount of deliberation and yeah, consistency, I would say. Yeah? And uh, with all of these things, uh, to summarize that, it is you mentioned here in the following, yeah, um, how long can microscopy keep you entertained? No, that's the wrong question to ask, maybe. <laughs> it's not the question that does microscopy keep me entertained. Ask yourself, what I can I do to get the most out of microscopy? Okay, uh, because microscopy, like many other hobbies and activities, um, requires you to become active. So I say, turn it around. You yourself determine and um, how much microscopy should interest you. Okay, you try to adjust the hobby based on your own needs. And, and uh, if you become engaged uh, in the hobby and if you start to really dig in deeply, um, then things are also going to be, I think, more interesting and then um, it's less passive. Um, and then um, there's also a lot of personal development and personal learning that can take place. Yeah, I think I would like to invite you, uh, please, uh, if you have any comments, uh, please do uh, post those comments as well. Maybe uh, some of you have other ideas or additional ideas. Maybe some of you even disagree with me. Please, it doesn't matter. Um, post your own opinions uh, um, in the comment section below. Um, I hope that uh, this video was informative. Um, yeah. And I'm going to just leave it at that now. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.